now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 8.06 here on O'Connor and Company, and we're chugging along here on a very busy Friday. It's Larry O'Connor alongside... Patrice Anwuka. That's right. That's you. On a Friday. It is a Friday, yes. and we're getting into the springtime in a big way. Yeah. With your a uh, lot of people going on spring break, so hopefully we're uh-huh. getting you launched into that and uh, getting a smile on your face. Michael Rivera, by the way, who ran for Loudoun County School Board, he was at that meeting yesterday about oh yeah turning the cameras back on. Yes. He's going to tell us what happened in about ten minutes. Okay. Uh, but first, did you see this video? Jenny Tear, who had uh, recently been at the Daily Color News Foundation. Um, and now is she uh, working for the New York Post now, covering oh. the border? Oh, good for her. Uh, she had this unbelievable, she's a regular guest on our program mm-hmm. here. She's yeah. now based out of Texas. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable, incredible, absolute mayhem on this video oh. that she captured where these illegal immigrants, all of the men, all of the men of a certain age, uh, pushing down a fence mm. and barrier and plowing through, rolling over the National Guard, the Texas National Guard, obviously the Texas National Guard, uh, not given the uh, uh, sort mm-hmm. of rules of engagement that allowed them to use any sort of force there, uh, pushing through it completely. And it is, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a stunning video. I'm sure by now that you've seen this, but this yes. was a riot. This is in El Paso. Hundreds of these guys uh, said, yeah, enough with the Texas National Guard. We mm-hmm. want to we want to get to the good guys, the mm-hmm. uh, Joe Biden's Border Patrol, who aren't there to keep us out. They're there to process our paperwork, mm-hmm. and they just plowed right through it mm-hmm. and went right to the uh, the point of entry. Yeah, uh, an, an amazing, Wh- which had, video. by the way, they plowed through the t- the the basic chain link fencing, mm-hmm. and then they were hit with a real secure uh, gate fence, the a wall. very high a wall. Yeah. A wall works because it kept them out. And they could, well, kept them out, but then put them in an orderly possession, possession where the so that you could Border Patrol was told to let were. them in. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, and I mean, that's just outrageous. And it uh, is it, outrageous. The problem is I actually set this up by saying it was unbelievable. But, of course, it's not unbelievable. It's 100% believable. Hmm. This, is, this is the scenario that has been created now at our border. And it, I assure you, Jenny Tear's New York Post video will be used mm. in campaign ads oh, yes. across the entire political sphere. If if Republicans are smart, and sadly that is a huge, huge if. Now, Spencer Brown, my colleague over at Townhall.com, has mm-hmm. a really interesting analysis of some new polling data, specifically on Hispanic voters. Okay. Uh, in a rev- actually, I'm sorry, not just Hispanic voters, but Democrats as well. Um, this has to do with crime in our streets. Mm-hmm. Uh, huge reversal, as Spencer says, from 2020. A majority of Americans now say that the criminal justice system needs to be tougher on offenders. Mm. Uh, this, I think, is in part and parcel to the chaos that we see at the border right yeah. now, where laws are not being enforced, laws are ignored, defund the police protocols with laws being ignored or laws not being enforced in our major cities have created this atmosphere where there I- there are no rules. That's there right. is no law. Only only people like you and I, Patrice, yeah. follow the law and play by the rules. And those who break the rules and are literally breaking our laws are Getting off scot free, and, and you know, even Democrats are done with it. You know what they call people like us, victims, and <laughs> the no, the, you call the other people offenders. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're 100 percent right, and that's and so that that plus the border, I think, is starting to really gain momentum in mm. terms of the political messaging this year, and and what are winning issues. Finally, this one, uh, CNN here. Let me give you the. Do we have the audio on this? Uh, hang on. I will give you the audio. This is on recent poll data having to do with the border. Uh, because, you know, Joe Biden and Democrats, they want to go on television or they want to give their speeches and they want to say, oh, yeah, the border's a problem, all right, but it's all Republicans' fault mm-hmm. because they mm-hmm. didn't. They listen to Donald yeah. Trump, who wants there to be border chaos, and they didn't pass our bipartisan bill, right? That ain't going anywhere. They've been at that for two months now, yeah, three months. Working. It's not landing. No, and listen. You, know, you might think, you know, that Hispanic voters might be the types of folks who would have a backlash against Donald Trump's remarks, right? Ain't the case. If you ask Hispanic voters who do they trust more on border security and immigration, 
overwhelmingly they trust Donald Trump more by a tremendous margin. Look at that, 49 percent to 24 percent. And this is among Hispanic hmm. voters. Yeah. Who do you trust for border security and information? 49 to 24. Yeah. And the arrogance of this elitist journalist in New York City saying would think. you would think think that Hispanic voters, yeah. because they just assume that Hispanic voters buy into their, their BS. Well, but they, no, Hispanic voters know better than anyone mm-hmm. about what's going on at the border and who's being harmed by these policies. Exactly. Well, Hispanic voters, like black voters, not monoliths. Mm-hmm. And their experiences are different. And they also view issues differently than the left wants to paint them as. And so when you're his, when you're Hispanic, you know that the illegals coming into the, the illegal aliens or illegal migrants coming into this country, they're going to be released more than likely into your communities. And if these are folks that have criminal records and criminal intent, um, you are the one who may be, your house may be violated. You may be the one who's uh, assaulted on the street. You yeah. may be the target of their their criminal activity. And so you know, and you also recognize that you came here legally. Your family members came here legally and you understand the process and you understand family members at, back at home who are <laughs> still stuck in the, the, the government level labyrinth trying to get their uh, their case to this country so that they can join you legally listen to the sound of the chaos from jenny Terre's video of this uh well it can only be described as invasion this mob of hundreds plowing through the chain link fence uh, set up by the national texas national guard <laughs> That, that is the sound of a mob. That is the sound of a mob of of young men uh-huh. plowing through a border at a, our southern border, a barrier yes. at our southern border, and demanding entry into our country. There's a word for that. It's invasion. Uh, Democratic Representative Pete Aguilar on the Hill yesterday, <laughs> a reporter had the video on yeah. her phone and said, hey, take a look at this video. What do you think? Look at this video. It's pretty dramatic. Yeah, I haven't seen the video. It's I'm, yeah. it, I'm playing it right now. Yeah, all right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, I haven't in the seen sand. it. I, yeah, all right, whatever. Yeah, have you seen this video? Uh, no, I haven't. Well, here it is. Yeah, I haven't seen it. No, I'm showing it to you right now. See you later. So the fact that they they're don't not want resp- to address it. No, they don't they because don't they know there's no answer. To it. There's yeah. no answer. Uh, Democrat governor in is this in Massachusetts? Maura Healy. Uh, Maura yeah. Healy asking about an illegal immigrant in mm. Boston who sexually assaulted a young disabled girl. Yeah. He asked Governor Healy if she can prevent this type of incident from happening again. You know, unfortunately, we have we have security and systems in place. We have vetting in place. Um, it is unfortunate that that you know from time to time things will happen. Things will happen from time to time. And what vetting is she referring to? Uh, so when Governor DeSantis, when Haitians tried to come to Florida and Governor DeSantis says, I'm sending them to Martha's Vineyard, uh, Governor <laughs> Healy, you said that those folks are welcome up in Ma- Martha's Vineyard where the Obamas are vacationing probably over the next few months. Mm. Uh, we'll see. Things. Wa- a little disabled girl was sexually assaulted by a person who shouldn't have been in this country like, in whatever, the first place. And her. the answer is things will happen. It's 815. WMAL. Making sense of the news. Live. From the Home Paramount Pest Control Studios. Home Paramount, the leader in pest control since 1939. Weeknights with Mark Levin, 6 to 9 p.m. On News Talk 105.9 WMAL. Making sense of the news. Yesterday, we gave you a preview of a committee meeting from the Loudoun County School Board where they were going to revisit the idea of having those cameras turned off during public commentary. Mm-hmm. That's because, well, they hate transparency and they don't, they're they afraid of <laughs> yes. the parents. They're afraid of the taxpayers. Mm-hmm. And they don't want anyone who is complaining about the school board to actually be seen That's right. by the yeah. public. And, yeah. and I think, as you have pointed out, they also don't want the fact that it's a multi-ethnic, yeah. multi Yes. Multiracial. Yes. Uh, the one thing, you know, if the Loudoun County School Board was intending to try to unite the people of Loudoun County, they have done it. <laughs> people of all races exactly. and all creeds, they all hate yeah. the Loudoun County School Board. <laughs> <laughs> or You're at kidding. least their policies. Michael Rivera is a dad out in Loudoun, and he ran for school board, and he was at the meeting. Hey, Michael, thanks for uh, chiming in here and giving us uh, a report on this. We're not paying you a damn thing, by the way, for this report, so don't even send us a bill. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. So what happened yesterday? 
So um, I got there a little bit late, but someone was still giving public comment. And um, it was public comment related to the policy uh, that they were looking at. And, you know, another person was saying, hey, what's going on? Why are you uh, trying to restrict public comment? Um, And then towards the end of the meeting, when they got to that agenda item, it was the last agenda item, which is a typical tactic Mm -hmm. of the school board to put the critical agenda, uh, the critical items at the end of a meeting, hoping that most people will leave. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't. Uh, And so April Chandler gave a, uh, a very flaccid statement about how she encourages public comment, but that many other jurisdictions have more restrictive measures. She didn't mention any of the names of those districts. Um, so she just generally made it look like she did so much research and that we're, that Loudoun County is so much better and that our, our public comment period is just so much more free. Um, but then Lauren Chernoff and Ann Donahue went on to make statements uh, and Donahue uh, previously had said that, um, you know, she was worried about people being doxxed and the videos being used online, which is uh, categorically false. Hmm. Uh, and then Lauren's statement gave a, uh, Lauren Chernoff gave a very powerful statement with regards to the timing, the critical nature of public comment, the right of the people to speak. Um, and, and she was on point in that there are very few ways for us to move the needle with the school board. Mm-hmm. And I have, I've said it multiple times, two ways move the school board, extreme and media scrutiny and litigation. Well, I'll tell you, the only people being doxxed are the conservatives who that that's that's yeah. the only record of people being doxxed are actually uh, uh, parents. I shouldn't say conservatives because you're not to be conservative to hate the policies coming out of the school board. But yeah. that's the only document. So that, that's completely disingenuous because the same people that they're um, trying to silence and turn the cameras off of are the people who have actually been doxxed. Mm. Um, but Patrice, what? I'm, yeah, I mean, Michael, what was the mood in the room last night? Um, it was uh, it was very somber because we're all looking at each other, parents that have been involved, uh, new parents that mm-hmm. are getting involved, um, and we're, it's just incredulous. We just don't understand why a brand new school board. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a reason why, regardless of your political uh, uh, affiliation, there's a reason why the old school board is no longer around. They mm. they yep. put in place bad policies. They had poor governance. They had a poor superintendent that was indicted. Uh, and, and this new school board seems to think, and you, now you have to talk about politics, they think they need to toe the party line. Mike, yeah. the vote. I'm sorry, right. Michael. Did, wait, can you bottom line it for us? What, what's the fate of the policy? Um, right now, April Chandler said that she wanted to have a conversation about it. Yeah. Uh, and I thought they were going to have that conversation <laughs> yesterday, and only were made and there was no conversation i see so they just made statements and no the, conversation no feedback and no decision our our uh expectation is that they are setting the stage to either severely limit public comment or remove it completely mm. thank you michael rivera appreciate thank it you so much sir it is eight. all right you guys have a great weekend is that, you too thank you uh, we usually have a rule here a standing rule that there's no bruce springsteen allowed I'm oh just, yeah oh can't stand you the can't man. stand the boss can't stand him can't stand his music <laughs> that said yeah he is in the news so we are connecting the dots here mm. uh bruce springsteen according to the new york post has returned to the stage and after recovering from an illness of sorts that okay. they won't tell us what it is okay. and he looks completely unrecognizable in fact well he does look recognizable just not as bruce springsteen in this picture he looks like actress tilda swinton <laughs> He does kind of look like a woman. Or a little like Megan Rapinoe. Oh, I see it. Somebody tweeted up. We'll we'll put this picture out on our WMF (laughs) so you know what we're talking about. Yikes. Um, Because he's got his shirt unbuttoned down to his midriff. For God's sake, you're 80 years old, man. Cover it up. And his his chest sort of, he does look like he's got a little boobage going on there. I think whatever his physical therapy involved, I think it also included estrogen. Well, because his chest is smooth, not just hairless, but like wrinkle free. So, oh, yeah, no, that he's had a a wax. So, maybe like, no, I'm thinking maybe Botox in his pectoral muscles. Definitely Botox up here and up Uh, here. And I don't know what's happening there, but he's just a bizarre human being. Well, you know, life will do that to you. 
He's going to change his name from Boss to Lady Boss. <laughs> boss Babe? Is that the next next one? That's weird. Uh, the E Street Band. The, yeah. No one knew, but E stands for estrogen. I had no idea. <laughs> or effeminate, perhaps. Uh, I mean, he was so... I'm mean, Seeing other pictures, he was fine when he walked out with his shirt buttoned up. But then it's the angle tilted back with the, the chest out that makes him look... Very feminine, um, yeah. and his yeah, his physique. Was now so fully cool. healthy, Bruce Springsteen rejoined the E Street Band and launched his 2024 tour with an epic 29 song performance in Phoenix on Tuesday night. Here's what I'm thinking: mm-hmm. you know, everyone makes fun of Mick Jagger when he goes out for his, you know, uh, the tour sponsored by First Alert. I followed and I can't get up because he's like, uh, I believe 110 years old now, but he's still rocking, <laughs> right? He hasn't had work done, and so he looks okay. like he looks yeah. like an old man, but he still moves great. It's like, yeah. and it's and he's embracing it. And he's got one thing over Bruce Springsteen, and that he actually plays and sings good music, The Rolling Stones, as opposed to this <laughs> garbage. I'm sure you're going to get some some Twitter action, some X dot com action. I am fine with that. I will go to the grave on this. Bruce Springsteen <laughs> is a talentless hack. It's eight thirty. WMAL FM, Woodbridge, Washington, a cumulus media station. Making sense of the news. News Talk 105.9. Now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 837, we're going to hand it off to Chris Plant coming up in just a little bit. Half an hour, but uh, Patrice Anwuka, we yeah. still have more to say, don't and we? And it's still a fry, yay. It absolutely is. <laughs> so MSNBC, but you know, I often joke about the fact that um, everybody has a podcast. I mean, there's so many. There's so many out there. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. And you know, and, and there is a difference, you know, between podcasting mm-hmm. and broadcasting. Absolutely. Do you know what the difference is? We are unscripted. It, but broadcast is unscripted. It takes uh, innate talent. It does. And You're not uh, watching the clock. Skill sets that you don't exactly. It, 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 but podcasting is just pl- buy a mic at the drugstore, <laughs> plug it into your computer, and yeah. start talking. Yeah. That's what podcasting. That's what is. a lot of people are doing these days. Exactly. Okay, I'm a little jealous because <laughs> they can do it in their pajamas. Uh, that said, mm-hmm. sometimes you come across a podcast that is like, oh, come on. Seriously, this is this is what we're doing here, and uh-huh. this is this has th- everything about this. First of all, it's produced by MSNBC. Okay, so it's going to be informative, right? Truthful. It's a man and a woman sitting in a room reading the indictments of Donald Trump. What? Reading the indictments of Donald. There, MSNBC isn't even in the business of news anymore. It's like an <laughs> anti-Trump group therapy session. It's like the only reason to put this out there is to make liberals feel this sort of weird cosmic them up again. orgy of hate against Trump and, more importantly, Trump's voters. A- anytime things start to look better for the president, oh, we got to be rem- we we have to be reminded by MSNBC why you shouldn't feel anything for him. But, but here's the thing: it's not just any man and woman. Of course, they got a star-studded cast. It's Glenn Close and Liam Neeson. And somehow they've even made Liam Neeson sound boring. Perpetrated three criminal conspiracies. <laughs> A, the conspiracy to defraud the United States by using dishonesty, fraud, and deceit to impair, obstruct, and defeat the lawful federal government function by which the results of the presidential election are collected, counted, and certified <laughs> by the federal government. In violation of 18 United States Code, Section 371. B, a conspiracy to corruptly obstruct B. Like, this would only make sense if he throws this paper down, pulls out like a, a, a Glock, and then shoots a, 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 somebody coming through the door about to assassinate him. That I would, that's a podcast I'd be interested in. You mean like this? I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you are looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. If you're looking to challenge the electoral See? results of Pennsylvania, then I'm going to have to use those skills against now you. Now that's a podcast I would listen to. 
How how sad and pathetic is your life that you would download Liam Neeson <laughs> and Glenn Close reading the indictments against Donald Trump? That is what happens when you have Trump derangement syndrome. I never use that term, but some people actually do have it. And this is this is their therapy session, their take home homework assignment. Up until this moment, you know, they, they say there's certain actors where, well, that person could just read from the phone book and it would sound amazing and dramatic. By the way, kids, a phone book is a book that we used to get <laughs> that had people's phone numbers. Yeah, in it. the government would send it to us <laughs> exactly. for free. Um, the, 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 but and I would say Liam Neeson is one of those guys. He's got one of those voices. He's yeah. one of those intensities. But now here we go. We've given him basically the proverbial phone book to read. Five one two K and C, a conspiracy against the right to vote and to have one's vote counted in violation of eighteen. United States Code, <laughs> Section 241. <laughs> Each of these conspiracies, which built on the widespread mistrust the de- you, you gotta believe that he got a ton of oh, money sure to do so. this. Because why else would he do? Why else would you sit down and read U.S. Code? When you're Liam Neeson, and I think there was a point in Liam Neeson's career where he just said, I'm just going to do whatever movie they asked me to do so I can make money. Michael yeah. Caine, I think, also went through that. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Well, it's funny. When you look at the, some of the characters they play, sure, in it's like, fair. Yeah. Hey, well, yeah. the check cash, sure, I'll show up and I'll do it. But then he does things like he understands who he is. He uh-huh. understands what role he plays. Like, did you ever see? You know, it's not a movie for families. Okay. Um, Ted. You ever seen the movie Ted, uh, no. Mark Wahlberg and the Little Teddy Bear? Oh, I've seen the ads. Yeah, no, that is not a family-friendly movie. That is, that is movie. not a family. I know it looks like it's for kids. It's <laughs> not it's for not. kids. And then in Ted 2, uh-huh. Liam Neeson does a cameo that is exquisite. I'd like to ask a few questions about this breakfast cereal. I've been led to understand that tricks are exclusively for children. Is that correct? Well, I, I mean, they say uh, tricks are for kids in the commercials. Uh-huh, but it- uh-huh. And is that enforced by law? Uh, Not to my knowledge, no. So if I purchase these tricks, there'll be no trouble? No, no, you you should be fine. You do understand that I myself am not a child. I I was able to sniff that out, yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring these back to my apartment. Uh, Yeah, yeah, you'll you'll be okay. And uh, I won't be followed. Uh, no, that's that's not in our budget here. Hey, <laughs> that's not in our budget. Don't forget what you've done for me here today. <laughs> I would prefer that you do. <laughs> See, I would. I want to think that when they yeah. proposed this to Liam Neeson, they said, "Here's what we want you to do, Liam. You can do it from home. Here's a microphone mm. to use. Just record this thing." I want to think that he thought it was a parody. It was a satire, like Ted too. Oh. That he was like, just do you. So the, uh, I can't they believe were serious. they were serious. Well, you know, it might work if there is ad lib. If there is like, you know, he reads the section dot five. Yeah, four. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you believe this right. madness? Let, you know, if he were adding something to it, maybe. You know, um, liberals for years now. I mean, I mean, thirty years. Ever since Rush Limbaugh, liberals have been trying to do talk radio, and they mm. can't. It never works. It never. They would love to have their own version of WMAL. But they're not funny. They can't do it. They just can't do it. This is the best. So listen, everyone listening right now, because I know you love our station and we love you for loving our station. You've got us. The left, they've got this. Election fraud targeted a bedrock function of the United States federal government. The nation's process of collecting, counting, and certifying the results I, of the president. I promise election. you, you win in this, in this scenario. <laughs> it's 844. So, Patrice, do you have a bracket for the basketball tournament I that started yesterday? You don't? No. That's, it's What's wrong with you? We, I've got a lot of other fish to fry. Well, I love this stuff. And my bracket, I actually had Oakland beating Kentucky you in the first that. round. You so I'm, I'm my bracket is still intact. My final four is still intact. Uh-huh. Um, I know people who had Kentucky winning the whole thing, and they are very <laughs> sad today. Uh, now, you know, you can bet on all this stuff through uh-huh. sports betting apps. And yeah, all, I think we just heard an ad about one, right? That maybe I didn't, I'm done paying attention because <laughs> I certainly don't want to. Anyway, um, a dude put a $2 parlay in mm-hmm. and he hit it mm-hmm. and he got over 1500 bucks. What? Okay. That's a little bit of something. So he goes to cash it out and put it in his account or maybe yeah. double down and bet some more. And his betting app took the money. Why? Well, because he owed child support. 
And there was a standing, uh, what do they call it? Uh, Support a, a, order. Yeah, or, uh, or uh, lean, I guess, on whatever. And, yeah. and I guess his ex was smart enough to say, listen, he's going to have money. <laughs> here, here are the bank accounts, and here's oh, his wow. sports betting app account. Oh, and, so, and people are angry at the sports betting app. By the way, let me just say... It's in the rules. If you yeah. if you ever sign up, it, it tells you you know if there's any active liens against you uh-huh. or things like that. Uh-huh. And, um, number one and number two, if you're going to be mad at somebody, be mad at the guy who doesn't pay his child support. I'm Absolutely. sorry. What are you doing betting Absolutely. on games if you instead of feeding your children? Well, so here's the funny thing. So uh, the email that he received said that fifteen hundred seventy eight dollars and eighty four cents was taken out of his account to fulfill the child support open uh, balance that it was owed. Uh-huh. He actually won fifteen hundred eighty dollars and eighty four cents. So they left oh. him with two dollars. They made him whole. There you go. The two dollars he put in, he got to keep. It. And but it's a reminder, folks. Please pay your child support. I just looked up right. in DC. If you if you owe at least one hundred fifty dollars, you you sorry Maryland one hundred fifty dollars in child support. They're going to take it the lottery. So, and in DC, it's six hundred bucks. So DC is a little bit better. Take care of your kids first, then you can put a few bucks on a game. Eight fifty two. That's a wrap, Patrice. You have a great weekend. You too, Larry. Chris Plant, earlier this morning, we did a segment about um, when women should fish or cut bait when they're dating a person. You That's know, like right, five yeah. years and there's no ring. What do you, what's your rule of thumb on dating someone before you get married? I tend to be a little more flexible yeah. on that. Myself. More flexible? Yeah, a little, a little more flex. I'm kind of, um, well, you know, my best girl and I, we uh, we shacked up for, uh, what, like 25 years. Yeah, that's and, what I thought. Uh, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> But it was so okay. good. It was so good the whole time we didn't want to ruin it. You know, anyway, <laughs> we had, um, you know.